Hey there, must be something about oaths this week. I was doing a search based on the last video I did just the other day on oaths and came up across this. Ministry of Attorney General and Police Services Decision, British Columbia. By the way, this is not the official uh, coat of arms of British Columbia. This is something that appears to be the same, but if you look uh, not even that carefully, it is a totally different uh, coat of arms representing the artificial. And this is what they've done is they've uh, hidden the real behind uh, coats of arms that uh, look the same but are definitely not the same. Anyways, um, this is uh, the Police Act, which uh, British Columbia had the uh, original provincial police force in North America, from what I recall from years ago, in that they were the first uh, regional police force and the first uh, province in uh, Canada and the U.S. to have its own police force. It was uh, disbanded and uh, replaced by the RCMP at some point in its past. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's a military oc occupation of a federal uh, military organization, the RCMP in British Columbia. It would be nice to see an actual police force that was uh, within British Columbia instead of from outside of British Columbia. Uh, Ontario has its own police force, and Quebec has its own police force. And I believe one of the... Uh, Atlantic provinces has their own as well, but uh, British Columbia, for whatever reason, gave up their own police force in order to have the RCMP. There's a lot of information in here that's of uh, interest, not just with regards to oaths, but with regards to how to make complaints against the police and the authorities that the police have and so on. So we're going to just take a quick look at uh, some of it. The background information was uh, amended and the regulations and so on by the various groups. And what's interesting uh, with regards to these uh, amendments and so on, when you read the history of it, the reasons for the uh, changes in this particular case. The focus of the new act is to reform and strengthen the oversight of policing in British Columbia and to improve processes for handling public complaints against municipal police constables and departments. It appears, like with the RCMP, that uh, the local police have failed in their duty to investigate their own actions. So when a police officer is found in violation of some law or has injured some person or false arrest or whatever it happens to be, assault, uh, very often these events are swept under the rug or investigated and then uh, no charges uh, are deemed necessary, etc. And what has happened with the RCMP is they've lost the right to uh, investigate themselves. It is now an outside organization that investigates the RCMP because they have proven themselves over and over, again and again, over a long period of time to have failed to uphold the, whole, whole, uphold the law and uphold the, uh, the rules of their own system for their own officers. And it's a pretty sad state of affairs when you can't count on the police to be honorable. And some people will laugh when I say that. But I'm one of those old-fashioned folks who uh, believes that uh, people of integrity should be the only ones that are in positions of authority and uh, the positions of police. And anybody who uh, breaks the law, whether they're a police officer or any other type of officer, uh, should face the, the same type of uh, scrutiny as any other private citizen and uh, probably even a higher level of scrutiny because you're taking on a public trust when you step into a public office or into a police office, and uh, that public trust you are supposed to not violate. And unfortunately, it happens all too often and seems to be more the norm than anything else. So the following changes were made under the new legislation. Uh, it's all about a complaints process and how to uh, uh, properly complain and properly get things investigated to ensure that the violations of people in positions of uh, the police do not get away with uh, breaking the public trust and there's an internal discipline process uh, if there is uh, for instance violations of other officers rights for instance the RCMP right now have major issues with claims of rape where uh, female officers are not only facing uh, sexual harassment on the job but also instances of uh, uh, sexual abuse on the job as well and any service or policy complaint and I really curious by this uh, service and policy. I'm assuming that uh, the service complaint may be that you received poor service, maybe like a kick in the head from an officer or something like that. Um, you received poor service. So uh, there's all sorts of things here with regards to how to make the complaints in this whole new process because 
it just wasn't working. They were not uh, receiving the complaints. They were not uh, uh, in properly investigating them. And uh, these complaints were not being prosecuted in cases where they probably should have been. Now, the police do have uh, in uh, the BC um, legislation here a regulation for a police oath or solemn affirmation. And like with all oaths, they are mandatory. You do not hold the position or the post or the office unless you have a sworn oath on file that has been witnessed, dated, sealed, and on file. So the form of oath or solemn affirmation under the Police Act uh, for an officer other than an enforcement officer. I wonder what some officer is who's not an enforcement officer. Could that be a peace officer? Because a peace officer is different than an enforcement officer. A peace officer upholds a peace. An enforcement officer upholds legislation against legal entities. So uh, take a look at this. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen Canada, her heirs and successors. Oh my goodness. I will, to the best of my power, cause the peace to be kept and prevent all offenses against persons and properties of Her Majesty's subjects. Very interesting choice of words. Subjects, I believe that uh, the UN Declaration of Human Rights uh, abolished the idea of subjugation and subjects. And uh, there are no more subjects, but there are only citizens of a country. So Her Majesty's subjects. Who are Her Majesty's subjects? I would very much like to know who the Police Act considers to be Her Majesty's subjects. I will faithfully, honestly, and partially perform my duties as whatever the title of their office is. And a subsection for an enforcement officer or bylaw enforcement officer. So again, enforcement officer, is that the policeman doing his uh, policy enforcement? By the way, if you look at the term uh, police, you look at the word and you change the pronunciation of it from police to policy. And uh, that's effectively what police are. They are policy enforcers. They are not peace officers, which is an office. So uh, an enforcement officer, I would assume, is a police officer. And uh, this one is probably applicable to a peace officer, something other than an enforcement officer. That's my assumption at this point in time. Guess what? They also bear true allegiance and uh, faithfully, honestly, and partially perform their duties to their office. They don't have to uh, best their power, cause the peace to be kept, and prevent offen offenses. So uh, an enforcement officer has no oath to keep the peace or prevent offenses. Only this other than an enforcement officer has that. Again, interesting distinction. For members of board or committee, director, employed, etc., etc., faith faithfully and honestly and partially perform duties, not accept improper performance, uh, will not accept in the proper performance of my duties, disclose to any person any information obtained in the course of those duties. Um, so here it is, in law, filing of the form, an oath or solemn affirmation under section 1 above must be made before the commissioner and filed, and filed. If the appointee is a provincial constable or an auxiliary constable, oath must be filed with the commissioner. So that's where you go, you go to the commi police commissioner to get the oaths of the, the constables. If the appointee is a municipal constable or a special municipal, uh, must be filed with the chief constable of the municipal police department operating the municipality for which the constable is appointed. So for instance, uh, West Vancouver, Vancouver, uh, Port Moody, Abbotsford, Delta, they all have municipal constables. I'm assuming the city of Vancouver uh, police is considered a municipal constable. So the place to go for their oaths is the chief constable of that particular department. If the appointee is a bylaw enforcement officer, those wonderful people who write parking tickets and various other things, I guess, it must be with the chief constable officer, all right? Um, and in all other cases not specified, I wonder what those are, must be filed with the minister. So you can ask for the oaths in these specific places. Every police officer in the city of Vancouver must have their oath filed with uh, the chief constable of the Vancouver City Police, etc. That's the way I read this in a moment anyways. So it gives you an idea of uh, who's swearing what to whom, and I find it interesting that uh, they're uh, a swearing allegiance to Her Majesty and uh, this uh, idea of um, Her Majesty's subjects. And I wonder if Her Majesty's subjects are those who have sworn true allegiance to the Her Majesty. So let's see. 
I must keep the peace and prevent all offenses against persons and properties for Majesty's subjects. So would that be against all government officials? And uh, to heck with the public? I don't know. Uh, be interesting to know. So the Police Act is here, and it is uh, a fairly long act, and this is the index, which is hyperlinked. And you can click to any particular area, and the definition is always a good place to start. And it gives you various definitions here. I like this definition of entity. A municipality, a regional district, government corporation, or any other prescribed entity. So it has to be prescribed in a regulation what that particular entity is. Um, municipality includes the city of Vancouver but does not include regional or improvement district. So is a municipality only the city of Vancouver? Interesting question based on uh, statutory interpretation. Uh, there's lots of stuff in here. Police forces in British Columbia. The provincial police force. Now, it was dismantled many, many, many years ago. So it still exists at some level within uh, the organization, but uh, it's not public on the streets that I'm aware of, the RCMP are. Uh, and you'll look throughout this act, if you study it and go through it, that the Provincial Police Force is, rec is recognized throughout the act, so it's still in existence in law, but uh, is not active. The municipal police departments I mentioned before, and uh, as if prescribed by the minister, uh, as a police force, a designated policing unit, I guess those are special dudes. And let's see, the minister... There, it's interesting when you look at what the responsibility of the government is. The government has to ensure an adequate and effective level of policing and law enforcement maintained throughout British Columbia. Not the province of British Columbia, but British Columbia. And again, there's a legal difference there. And it lists what they have to provide to the various uh, areas and populations in order to ensure there's adequate policing, what that is. Now here the definition of entity has been changed. The definition section in the beginning is modified for this particular section because it's only in this section, 4.1 and 4.2, that entity takes on a different definition than what was uh, in the beginning part of this. Um, <clears throat> local government, there are all sorts of stuff in here. You'll notice this section here, jurisdiction of police constables. You'll remember from many old movies where there is jurisdictional, a police officer can't cross and uh, pursue into a different jurisdiction. The same issue is dealt with here in law. You can see it outlined specifically. Um, that the subject to restrictions specified in appointment regulations, provincial constable, auxiliary constable, designated constable, or other provincial special constable, while carrying out the duties of his or her appointment. So only while they're carrying out the duties jurisdiction throughout British Columbia so they can go anywhere in British Columbia to carry out and exercise the powers, duties, privileges, and responsibilities of a police constable or peace officer. There is a distinction and a difference. They are different capacities. He is entitled or required to exercise or carry out at law, at law, or under an enactment. There is a difference. There is a distinction. One is at law and one is under an enactment. They are separate and separate and separate. Did you hear me say separate? So if a police, police provincial constable, blah, 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 exercises jurisdiction under subsection 1 here in a municipality having a municipal police department, he or she must, if possible, notify the municipal police department in advance, but in any case must promptly, after exercising jurisdiction, notify the municipal police department of the municipality. So a Vancouver police uh, officer goes to, uh, let's say, Burnaby. He has to notify the Burnaby police that he is about to exercise his jurisdiction or immediately thereafter. So again, this whole idea of there's a set of rules and a set of lines and they have to obey the rules and they have a procedure to obey the rules, it is uh, intact, operational, and uh, they have to do it otherwise they get into trouble. But guess what? Only if we pointed out that they didn't do it. We'll also notice here that there is uh, standards of training that are specified in here. So uh, very often I believe that officers are not trained properly in protecting human rights and operating within the law. Guess who's liable? The minister on behalf of the government is jointly and severally liable for torts, damages caused by provincial constables, etc. 
and if the tort is committed in the performance of their duties. This is a limiting factor, and this is what a lot of people don't understand. In law, they have powers in order to do things. If they damage somebody while they are properly exercising that power within their duties, they are protected. The minister will accept liability. If they perform an act which is damaging, which they do not have permission to do and did in bad faith, they are not performing it within this realm of their duties and they are personally liable. This is why you can name in a suit the minister, the officer, the municipality that employed the minister, excuse me, the officer and the officer themselves in their personal capacity because if he is found to have acted outside the act, he's personally liable and the others are liable for uh, the torts in the first place because they are responsible for his actions and for poor training of him, etc. Uh, so again, there's lots of stuff in here. I'm not going to go much further in it. Oh, agreements to use the RCMP. This is an interesting uh, aspect of things in that uh, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, subject to an agreement, deemed to be a provincial police force. They are not. They are deemed to be. Remember, deemed is just uh, let's pretend for the sake of convenience. It's not a fact. And every member of the RC Royal Canadian Mounted Police is subject to the agreement, deemed to be a provincial constable. Um, there is a question with regards to the fact that uh, very often damages are caused by RCMP officers to citizens in British Columbia. They are handled under the Police RCMP Act, and uh, it's been a real problem with regards to holding them accountable. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, somebody referenced this, and I think it, there might be a case here, that uh, they are uh, liable under the Provincial Act as well because the province hires them, so they're liable for the contract uh, with the RCMP. And whoever is employing them, etc., within the province, they are subject to the Provincial Act as a provincial constable and therefore the rules associated with provincial constable not just federal. I don't know if anybody's actually prosecuted that but I think it's a interesting aspect of things to uh, consider if you're charging a police RCMP officer to also consider the provincial connection and deal with the province's liability for hiring them and uh, anybody else in the chain of command with, well relative to the uh, the municipality for instance uh, Burnaby and uh, Surrey, they all hire the RCMP. Well, guess who's responsible for hiring the RCMP for that particular area? The mayor of the city. So the mayor would be named in a suit uh, against the an RCMP officer as well because it was the mayor who put them there in order to do the job or do the job incorrectly. There's also a distinction here in that the RCMP with the periods and the phrase are Royal Canadian Mounted Police are distinct in law from RCMP without any periods. Um, all the government entities have been turned into corporations, as has the RCMP, is my understanding. And uh, so there's, a, I think, an interesting case to be made that there may be a difference between who's been hired, the legal corporate entity, the RCMP, or the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, otherwise known as the R period, C period, M period, P period. Um, and again, it's distinguished here. So... Um, there's a lot of stuff here to uh, and check out with regards to the various enactments. And uh, this is a particular uh, Police Act uh, regulation with regards to the forms of complaint. If you have a complaint against a municipal police officer, you uh, are going to provide uh, potentially a complaint on the forms that are included here. So here's the forms, and uh, all of the procedures for exercising a complaint are within the Police Act itself, so it's all laid out there. And uh, there's a regulation for here for how to make a complaint and the process of the complaint, who has to investigate, etc. So these are the rules that bind them to do the job of properly investigating a complaint against one of the municipal or city or pretend, potentially RCMP operating in one of those places uh, to ensure that uh, they are properly investigated and properly prosecuted uh, for any of their actions. So these are the rules that they are bound by. They're rules that we have, have nothing to do with us other than the fact that we can say, hey, your officer damaged me. He is bound by this, these sets of rules, and these are the policies and procedures for going after him and, and properly investigating the matter and for punishing him for uh, actions if they are proven to be unlawful. 
these are the rules, regulations, policies, and procedures we can point to and say, make sure you do it. And we, unfortunately, at this point in time, uh, still have to ensure that they're doing it because they failed in the past. Possibly the new um, information with regards to the, um, uh, the new committees and police commissions to ensure that these things are properly investigated. Hopefully they do do their job. And like I said, it's a sad fact of life that uh, the local police have failed in their duties to properly investigate and prosecute their own corrupt individuals and therefore have lost the right to do so locally and with the RCMP. So uh, interesting uh, for following up on taking the police to account for the fact that they've been given a public trust. They failed in that public trust and they need to be held accountable. Otherwise, they will continue to persecute and harm people uh, because uh, if the people don't say no, then they've just agreed it's okay. And so this is the whole idea behind the Hope for Justice course. Your complaint is their restraint. They do not have to restrain their actions if we do not complain about their actions. So this is the way to do it with regards to uh, police services in British Columbia. Hope this helps.